All right, we've got a couple of tools under our belt. We know how to do USUB. We know how to integrate by parts now. We also know how to handle trig integration when it comes to things like sine squared times cosine squared, the integral of that dx. But sometimes we still need more. That's not enough. And what can we do? Well, one other tool we're going to have is trig substitution. The question is, when are we going to use trig substitution? Trig substitution is going to be used when we have things in the form of a squared minus x squared, a squared plus x squared, or x squared minus a squared. Now, you might look at this and say, Ooh, those don't look like trig to me. Well, let's Let's start with the first. Let's start with the square root of a squared minus x squared. Here we are. Let's use an example. We're going to use a of 3. 3 squared would be 9. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to do a trig substitution. Instead of using the variable x, I'm going to start using the variable theta. Specifically, I'm going to say x is equal to 3 sine of theta. And then, of course, dx would be 3 cosine theta d theta. And thank goodness we're finally not using use again. If we go ahead and do that, and I rewrite the square root of 9 minus x squared dx as the integral of the square root of 9 minus 3 sine at theta all squared times 3 cosine theta d theta, why? Why, why would this make life easier. So then I go back to the 9 minus x squared. It's like, could we do this another way? Could we do this with u substitution? No. Could we do this with... No, I don't. We can't split that 9 and that x squared out of that square root, so we can't just do this with a simple um, integration or integration by parts. Let's get back to trying to convince you why on earth we'd <clears throat> want to do something that looks this awful. Well, if I go ahead and simplify things a little bit, I can pull out a square root of 9, which of course is just 3, so I've got the 3 times the 3, and I pull that out to be the 9. Then I've got the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta times cosine of theta d theta. And then you might think, ding, 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 I'm going to be able to use my handy-dandy Pythagorean theorem that says sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Therefore, I could rewrite that mess under the square root sign simply as cosine squared theta. Square root of cosine squared theta is just cosine theta, so I'm left with 9 times the integral of cosine squared theta. And this, this is one of those trig integrals that we've talked about in the past, cosine squared. What we do for this is we use a double angle formula that cosine of 2 theta is equal to 2 times cosine squared theta minus 1. So if I solve for cosine squared theta, I would get 1 half times cosine 2 theta minus 1. And I'm going to go ahead and plug that back into my integral. And I go ahead and integrate. And I'm going to say I've got a little bit of u sub in my head kind of work, but, but that's okay. I think you could see how the integral of 1 half cosine of 2 theta would end up being 1 half times 1 half times sine of 2 theta. If you need to work out using a u substitution, that is fine. I, th there's no um, shame in that. Okay, great. I've done the integration. Yay. But now I've got all these thetas. I don't want to be in theta world. I want to be in x world. How do I get back to x world? I do know that x is equal to 3 times sine of theta. And I'm getting upset because um, this doesn't seem easier at all, and I can in fact figure out what theta is, right? If x is equal to 3 times sine theta, that means sine theta is equal to x over 3, or theta is simply equal to the arc sine of x over 3. I could do that, but what about this 2 theta? I don't know anything about 2 times theta. I can't pull that 2 out. It's a different angle altogether. So I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Short video. Um, except I do know that sine of 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cosine theta. And I do know sine theta, but I don't know cosine theta. But at least it's now the same angle. It's not 2 times something. It's just cosine of theta. Is there anything I can do to figure that out? Well, it turns out, no, calc 2 is not too hard. We're going to go back to triangles. We're going to draw triangles like we did back in pre-calculus. And it's actually going to help us solve this. If I know that x is equal to 3 sine theta, I can solve for sine theta 
and get that that's x over 3. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so if I draw that triangle, I have x and 3, and I do have a missing side. Could use the Pythagorean formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if I do that, the missing side is the square root of 9 minus x squared. Is it beautiful? No. But I do now know that cosine of that angle theta is simply the adjacent over the hypotenuse, or square root of 9 minus x squared, divided by 3. Let's now solve this. I go ahead and plug in x over 3 for sine theta, and 9 square root of 9 minus x squared over 3 for cosine theta. Again, I found that theta was just equal to, okay, just equal to. This is ugly, but that one was pretty easy to find. It's just arc sine of x over 3, or inverse sine, however you want to say it. And of course, we're not going to forget the plus c. It was a lot of work. But let's take a step back, and let's really look at what we did. We saw we had something in the form of a squared minus x squared, and the square root of that. We're going to use, whenever we see something in this form, we're going to use the substitution x equals a times sine theta. The dx automatically is a cosine theta d theta. We're going to simplify. We're going to evaluate integrals based on the tech, trig techniques that we learned the last section. We're going to draw a triangle to find that cosine. That's it. It seemed crazy, but those are really the basic steps to doing this kind of trig substitution. Let's look at a different type of trig substitution we might run across. That is if I have the square root of a squared plus x squared dx. Okay, this time my substitution, instead of a sine theta, is going to be a tangent theta. dx, instead of being a cosine theta d theta, will be a secant squared theta d theta. Again, we're going to simplify. Again, we're going to evaluate the integrals based on the trig techniques. And then we're going to finally draw a triangle to find this time, not cosine of theta, but secant of theta. All right, let's do an example. And I think now that we have this basic framework, it's not so crazy. All right, what we're going to do is the integral of dx over square root of 1 plus x squared. Notice it doesn't matter if it's in the denominator. It's got the form square root of a squared plus x squared. We're going to let x equal tangent theta. I'm, I put the 1 in there just to show that that's what my a is. dx is secant squared theta d theta. Once I put this all together, I remember that there's a Pythagorean relationship that 1 plus tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta. Therefore, I can rewrite this as secant squared theta divided by the square root of secant squared theta, which is just secant theta. Now I've got a pretty straightforward integral, the integral secant theta d theta. I'm going to go ahead and give you this on any exam, that the integral of that is the natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta. So I know what tangent theta is. However, I don't know what secant theta is. So I'm going to do the same triangle. Tangent is x. That means it's x over 1, opposite over adjacent. I draw my triangle. I find my missing side, which would be square root of 1 plus x squared. Secant, that's the reciprocal of cosine, so it's the hypotenuse over the adjacent, or square root of 1 plus x squared all over 1. That integral that I started with is simply equal to the natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta plus c. But now I can bring it back into the terms of x, and it's the natural log of the absolute value of the square root of 1 plus x squared plus x plus c. Okay, one more. For my class, I'm going to expect you to be able to set these up and recognize which trig substitution you're going to have to do. So this one is the square root of x squared minus a squared. Before we had a squared minus x squared and we used the substitution of sine, now we're going to use the substitution of secant. So again, it'll be a equals secant theta. We'll simplify, evaluate integrals based on the trig techniques, draw the triangle to find, and I just left that off because um, things are going to get crazy. For instance, I could do this kind of problem. Find the area of a region created between this function, square root of x squared minus 9, and the x-axis over specific interval 3, 5. So we would set this up. The area equals 3 to 5. Again, x squared minus 9, square root of that dx. 
I'm going to use the substitution x equals 3 secant theta, dx is equal to, well, the derivative of secant is secant tangent, so we have this for dx. So I'll make my substitutions. Notice right now I'm just crossing out the 3 and the 5. I'm just reminding myself that I've got to change those because it's got to be in theta world. I'm just crossing them out to remind myself I've got to fix those. I get this down to this point. What's underneath that square root sign simplifies to tangent squared of theta, again, based on the Pythagorean identities. So I've got a tangent squared theta and a secant theta, d theta. Now let's look at those endpoints. Let's start at the 3. If I have x equals 3 secant theta, that means 3 equals 3 secant theta. The only way to make that true is if secant theta is equal to 1. The only time that secant theta equals 1 between 0 and 90 degrees is at 0. So instead of a 3, we're going to write a 0. For 5, however, 5 equals 3 secant theta. Secant theta is equal to 5 over 3, so theta is equal to inverse secant 5 over 3. So this isn't pretty. And there is a trig method to handle tangent squared secant squared, or secant theta d theta. It's ugly. We rewrite tangent squared in terms of secant squared minus 1. I think you know by now that I try very hard not to make work just for the sake of work. Quite frankly, if you can set it up at this point, I'm happy. I'm really happy with this. I do still want you to recognize what the substitution is. I want you to be able to get to these points. But after that, let, let me just tell you what the answer is. Um, yeah, it's absolute value, natural. This is, I don't need, do you want to grade this on an exam? No. Do you want to do this on an exam? No. So you're not going to see this on an exam, and now you're not even going to see this on homework. But recognize that there are three different times we're going to use trig substitutions, and there are three different methods you would use depending on the original problem. Be able to do these, be able to do these, and know how to set up these.